So, uh, all right. So what's this case about? What, what's important to get out of this case? Well, AT&T and the Concepciones had a deal, right? They signed it. The Concepciones signed a contract. AT&T signed the contract. And in that contract, they had a deal. And the deal was, if there's a problem, you will go to arbitration. And not only that, but you will not do, you, the, the Concepciones agreed to not ask for class arbitration. So what does that mean? What's going on? What is this idea of class arbitration? Well, the point is that uh, this was this case was a very small dollar amount. Um, the Concepciones bought a phone, quote unquote, they got a free phone, and then they were charged all the sales tax. And maybe this hap has happened to you. This happened to me a couple times with AT&T, and it's not their fault. Uh, Glorious California requires them to collect full amount of sales tax. I actually looked this law up. It's true. To collect the full amount of sales tax on the full retail value of the phone. Even though I only paid 100 bucks for my iPhone once upon a time, I got the privilege of paying sales tax on 800 bucks. Well, the Concepciones were thought they were getting a free phone, and then next thing you know, they're being asked to give to pay $50 in sales tax. And they said, hey, time out. That's not fair. That's not free. And so they wanted to sue AT&T. But of course, who's going to sue AT&T? Who's going to bother to go to arbitration for 50 bucks? Who's going to find an attorney to fight this for 50 bucks? Or who's going to pay an attorney to fight this for 50 bucks, right? So you're not. So the Concepciones wanted to gather together a whole bunch of AT&T customers and as a group go into arbitration together and do what's known as class arbitration, which is similar to a class action lawsuit, which you may be familiar with. They're in the news from time to time, and that's where a whole bunch of, a whole bunch of plaintiffs get together and sue one defendant. And ultimately, it makes it easier for the attorneys then to make a lot of money. And the attorneys can make a lot of money by having you know, hundreds or maybe even thousands of plaintiffs. And even if they only made a couple hundred bucks off of each, they can walk away with, with a nice pocket full of money. And so the California Supreme Court, once upon a time in a case called Discover Bank, told Discover Bank, hey, we think that that's not right. We don't think it's right that you're taking advantage of your customers. You're this big, huge corporation, and you're taking advantage of the little tiny customers and not letting them group together to sue you when there's a, you know, a grievance of maybe over a small amount of money. And California said, that's unconscionable, and we're, gonna, we're not going to stand for that, and we're going to overrule what's in the contract, and we're going to set that aside because it's just not right. It's just not fair. And maybe you agree with the California Supreme Court. In, in, in a sense, I, I could see their point, right? They're looking out for the little guy. But, hey, you signed the contract. And as a rule, you're going to, you know, as probably as you picked up on reading this chapter, courts look upon arbitration very favorably. Primarily because they want to keep these cases out of the court system, right? If parties can get together and, and, and resolve disputes on their own outside the court system, that's best. And when that can happen, the courts are very, very, very slow to overturn arbitration agreements and arbitration decisions. Because, of course, once you open up that opportunity, then what's the point? Everyone's going to then throw run to the courts as soon as they don't like their arbitration agreement. And the courts, as a general rule, say, no, can't do it. And that's essentially what the, the Supreme Court said here. Hey, you guys agreed to not do class arbitration, and we've got precedent, and we've got federal law that also says, too bad for you, you signed the contract, and now you've got to live with it. And so as a result of this case, the Supreme Court overturned Discover Bank, essentially told California, no, 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 uh, 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 can't do that. Not allowed to use unconscionability to overturn a contract, an arbitration clause in a contract. And so I'm sure at this point, because Discover Bank is not that old of a case, I'm sure at this point Discover Bank is like, ah, why didn't we fight this to the Supreme Court? We could have won. But they didn't, and it's too late for them. But anybody moving forward, any corporation moving forward, can have a pretty, be pretty comfortable to know that if they put a arbitration clause that prohibits class arbitration in the contract, they're going to they're gonna be pretty comfortable to know that that's not going to get overturned and that uh, someone like the Concepciones are going to have to go to all the trouble all by themselves to get their 50 bucks back, which probably they would have lost anyway in this situation. But uh, 
that's that's the conclusion of this case so I'm gonna stop there I will make another video for the Waffle House case but uh, give me your feedback uh, hopefully you find this video helpful uh, I, I know it's difficult at the beginning to read cases uh, don't feel compelled to type out and give me the full brief I noticed that uh, one of you did and that's fine that you did but don't feel like just when you're doing the discussions just answer the questions that I've provided that's fine and, and try to interact with your classmates I want you guys to, to enjoy reading these cases I want you to dive into them it's, it, for me it's always fun it was always fun in law school to read real life cases and to see what ha decisions happen to real people rather than just having a bunch of uh, words on a textbook page dic you know, uh, given to me so uh, read the cases, enjoy the cases, but really try to dive in and think, what's going on in these cases? What's the issue? What's What law applies to this? How is the court applying that law, right? Uh, that's the idea behind IRAC. Uh, the conclusion is always pretty simple. In fact, in our book, the conclusion is really simple because it's always given to you right here at the end of the case. Okay, anyway, that's enough for now. And uh, look, you can look for the Waffle House video if you want me to, if you want to hear my thoughts and comments on that video as well.